Finally, the time has arrived, Exotic Armor Tuning Preview. In Season 21, we will be rolling out the first wave of changes to Exotic Armor intended to rebalance and reimagine many armor pieces at both ends of the usage spectrum. We've been hearing the feedback that such changes are highly desired, but the complete overhaul of the armor system and the introduction to entirely new damage type and lightfall necessitated delaying these changes to Season 21 so the dust could settle a little bit. There are two primary goals we settled on this for Balance Pass, identify underused armor pieces and revamp them to increase their appeal, and tune down outlier armor pieces that are probably too powerful, looking at you Starfire Protocol. On top of that, we wanted to curb a few instances of damage stacking that circumvented the expectations and introduced in Lightfall, partially to bring damage into the expected range, but also to alleviate the pressure to use certain combinations of exotics and mods to reach optimal damage output. In these cases, we hope that reduces the desire to run surge mods on your leg armor, allowing your exotic to cover that ground, freeing you up to use other mods in those sockets. With these goals in mind, here are the changes that we're making. Please note, unless otherwise specified, the following changes leave the rest of the exotics benefits intact. We got 25 armor pieces that are gonna be completely changing in Destiny. I'm super excited. First, we're starting off, of course, with the Hunters. Sealed Ahankara's Grass. This exotic will reload the magazines of all your weapons when you defeat a target with your powered melee, and for five seconds after dealing melee damage, you gain increased movement speed and jump height. Athers' Embrace, gain additional strength while the exotic Wade Knife damage bonus is active. Oathkeeper, when fully drawn, bows gain a bonus to damage against combatants that increase as you hold the draw, but deactivates after a few seconds. And we have a little bit of dev commentary here. The original redesign allowed you to retain the damage bonus as long as you held the bow at full draw, which can be done indefinitely thanks to the existing exotic functionality. However, this resulted in some overly passive playstyles where players felt like the optimal way to play was to move slowly at full draw or hide behind cover indefinitely before popping out to shoot. With a limited time window on the damage bonus, bows still benefit from a significant bump in damage while holding the draw for a short time without bogging down the play experience. Raiju's Harness. When deactivating your arc staff super, you create a blinding explosion that temporarily increases your arc weapon damage. However, blocking with the whirlwind guard will no longer consume energy more slowly. Radiant Dance Machines. Kills while your free dodge is active extend the duration of free dodging. No longer deactivates when you get too far away from your enemies. Deactivates after using Suspending Slam. Another dev commentary here. Adding the time extension on kills allows this to pair extremely well with Marksman Dodge, the Reaper Armor mod, and with the new powerful Attraction mod that allows you to collect orbs of power at a distance. During play testing, players could have free dodges for long stretches, pulling down a large number of orbs. However, allowing it to continue granting free suspending slams made it a little too easy to create an infinite orb generating machine without ever having to risk your own survival. Stompies removed airborne effective penalties. Stompies removed airborne effectiveness penalties. You only gain increased speed, slide distance, and improved jumping while your dodge energy is full. Another dev commentary, we want Stompies to have a strong fantasy but permanent uptime for potent movement benefits that make targeting hunters in PvP very difficult on controller ends up making it too automatic of a choice, even with the prior airborne effectiveness changes. We're undoing that change but tackling the uptime to try to keep it and make it so you can use the ambush or escape from an engagement, not both. Mask of Bacrius. Change to a tier 4 non-stacking weapon damage bonus, which behaves the same as the non-stacking damage bonuses provided by Surge Mods. Damage bonus increase in PvE from 10% to 25%, and now a bonus 6% weapon damage in PvP. No longer stacks with Surge Leg Mods, but provides a larger bonus that can be achieved with 3 such mods equipped. So this seems like it's going to be pretty damn good for damage. Time to move on to the Titans. Point Contact Cannon Brace, Lightning Strikes, now Jolt Targets, increased PvE damage per Lightning Bolt from 50 to 200, being amplified now increases the damage of Lightning Strikes by 50% instead of extending the range. No backup plans. This is a complete rework, replacing the old functionality entirely, now provides a moderate benefit to airborne effectiveness and reload speed of shotguns. While you have a void overshield, shotguns deal additional damage and shotgun final blows refresh your overshield. While using void subclass, rapid shotgun final blows or defeating a powerful enemy with a shotgun grants you void overshield and kicks off your health regeneration. 
Hopefully these seem a little bit more useful because these seem pretty sweet. Second chance. Shield throw melee now weakens enemies, stunning a barrier champion with your shield throw. Melee grants a full melee charge, which seems that could be pretty strong in GMs as well. Stronghold. Replace the healing from blocking shots precisely with significant damage reduction, 50% PvE and 10% PvP, while blocking with a sword. When you stop blocking, gain restoration times two with a duration that increases based on the number of shots you blocked. Some more dev commentary. The original heal on perfect guard mechanic was swapped out for the damage reduction to improve ease of use. The previous version of perfect guard incentivized rapid blocking and releasing of the block to be most effective, which was intuitive for most players and inaccessible for some. The change to damage reduction while blocking and restoration after you stop blocking allows you to close to melee range even against powerful enemies and staying alive while delivering attacks thanks to restoration. Conveniently, this also pairs very well with exotic swords such as the Lament. Eternal Warrior Rapid takedowns with arc weapons grant an escalating bonus to arc weapon damage using the same non-stacking damage bonuses by Surge mods. These can go all the way up to tier 4 damage bonus, granting a damage bonus of 25% in PvE and 6% in PvP, providing a larger bonus that can be achieved with 3 surge mods equipped. While at the tier 4 damage bonus, arc kills refresh the bonus's duration. After your Fist of Havoc super ends, you gain tier 4 damage bonus. So this also seems like a pretty big rework. Capri's Horn, the solar damage wave now scorches targets. Path of the Burning Steps, change to use the non-stacking weapon damage bonus by surge mods. This can go all the way up to tier 4 damage bonus, granting a damage bonus of 25% PvE and 6% PvP, providing a longer bonus that can be achieved with 3 surge mods equipped. While at the tier 4 damage bonus, solar kills refresh the bonus's duration, and becoming in case immediately grants you tier 4 bonus damage. Dune Marchers. Reduce the range of the chain damage from 20 meters to 12 meters and PvP damage from 85 to 50. Some more dev commentary. This exotic sees a lot of use in PvP, not so much in PvE, and these changes are to embrace that. The range on the damage change made it very easy to get killed by this exotic without ever having to see the person in PvP, so we reduced that range and tuned down the damage. Last but not least, on the Warlocks, Vesper of Radius. Your rifts emit arc shock waves every 5 seconds that deal 200 damage in PvE, 70 damage in PvP. Enemies defeated by these shock waves explode for an additional 100 damage, and if you have an arc subclass equipped, they also blind nearby enemies. Chromatic Fire Increase the radius and damage of the explosion created by precision kinetic takedowns. The explosion also applies a status effect to targets damaged by it, depending on which subclass you have equipped. So if you're running Arc, it's Blind. If you're running Solar, it's Scorch. If you're running Stasis, it's Slow. If you're running Strand, it's Sever. And if you're running Void, it's Weakened. Dawn Chorus. Daybreak projectile bonuses have been increased and no longer is reliant on the enemy being Scorched. Sanjuin Alchemy. Standing in a Rift grants a non-stacking bonus to weapon damage matching your subclass energy type. The damage bonus is equivalent to two Leg Surge mods, so 17% in PvE and 4.5% in PvP. Plaza of Ahamkara, Powered Melee Kills grant an Orb of Power. When Heavy Handed mods are equipped, increases the potency of the orb spawned. No more than one orb can be spawned per enemy takedown. Dev commentary here. This exotic uses the same perk as Heavy Handed and stacks with a mod should you choose to equip it. Mantle of Battle Harmony. Weapon bonus damage changed to tier 4 when super is fully charged, increasing damage bonuses in PvE from 20% to 25%, and reducing the damage bonus from 15 to 6% in PvP. No longer stacks with Surge Leg Armor mods, but provides a larger bonus that can be achieved with 3 such mods equipped. Damage bonus only applies to weapons that match your subclass damage type and now stacks with Empowering Rift and other similar damage bonuses. Extended base duration of this bonus from 6 seconds to 10 seconds in PvE and 3 seconds to 5 seconds in PvP. Ophidian Aspects. Remove the extended melee range. Some dev commentary. The extended melee range created some strange situations where a player's melee lunge would cause them to flicker in high latency scenarios. This exotic still retains many strong neutral game benefits. Promethium Spur. Grants Rift Energy for any solar weapon takedown, with more energy granted for solar weapon takedown while standing in a rift. 
Also, you now have to be standing in a rift when you get a final blow for the exotic to consume your class ability energy and create a rift at the target's location. Finally, onto the very last one, number 25, maybe the most important one on this list, Starfire Protocol. Reduce the amount of energy gain per instance of damage from 20% to 2.5%. Empowered weapon kills now grant 20% grenade energy. So that is a pretty big debuff in my opinion. Some dev commentary here. They say, oh, Starfire Protocol. This exotic has been strong for a very long time, ever since Solar 3.0 dropped and fusion grenades became much more powerful for Warlocks. In making the changes, we didn't want to completely rob the exotic of its benefits, but right now, Starfire Protocol is one of the best single target damage boosting exotics combined with Wither Horde or Wolfpack rounds from a rocket launcher with Demolitionist and essentially get an infinite loop of rockets and double detonating grenades. And it's sucking all the air out of the room. These changes are intended to tamp down on passive weapon damage giving you your grenade back too quickly. You still probably get an extra grenade or two during damage phase while pushing it away from single target damage dominance and more toward neutral play. And then here at the end they say, as with any changes we make, we're gonna be watching the data and your feedback carefully and additional tuning changes can be made accordingly. Uh, we're working on the next round of exotic armor tuning changes for future seasons. So all in all, I think this is a pretty big update. Of course, a lot of things are getting retuned. We have 25 total exotics that we just went over. I feel like we have a lot of better choices coming. I don't think all 25 are gonna be huge game changers. However, I feel like each class is gonna have a good new amount of things to try, hopefully some new exotics to use so we can see a little bit different gameplay now, especially in end game content, it'd be nice to see. But that's it for this one. If you watched the whole thing and you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. We got a lot more on the way. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.